Hello everyone, Simon Preston here. Welcome back to Reggae Boys Commentary. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have a very, very, very special guest with us today, none other than Earl Stephen, national player. Earl, how are you doing, my friend? Long time, let's see. Hey, bro. Yeah, man, I'm doing good. Uh, morning to you and your viewers. This is live, right? Yeah, well, it's pre-recorded, so it's going to be uploaded it. today. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, man, so I'm still telling everybody morning, depending yeah, on what yeah, time it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's been a while since we've talked about how was the family and everything, how was the boys doing, like growing up, big I think. Yeah, man, family doing great. Uh, like I said, the boys are growing. As you know, during these COVID times, things are a bit difficult, especially with having kids and trying to keep everyone safe. But yeah. we've been here in Jamaica since 2020. Yeah, we, we, left, we actually left Vietnam right before COVID went viral, I, I can say. And since that, we've been here, and everybody's healthy, so thank God for that. That's good. The boys starting to like football, they love football. Yeah, yeah man, yeah, man, they love football. I don't know if you have gotten... Yeah, you, you have. Well, on our family channel, you can see them playing football. We spend a lot of time uh, recording our family, and they love it badly, especially the big one. As you wake up, you want to go outside, go kick ball, so... <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, since the last time we caught up, you know, there's a lot happening with what was happening over in the Far East with, with High Pong. So I just wanted to catch up with you and see how things were going from that aspect. Was there a decision made by FIFA with that decision with High Pong? What's the situation right now? Is he willing to open up on it? Uh, uh, with that situation, yes. Uh, the case actually ended uh, in 2019, July. And it ended in my favor. So... Yeah, so everything went well there, and yeah, I actually went back to Vietnam and I signed for a club named Tanwa. Right. As soon as FIFA gave that clearance, I was able to sign back in Vietnam, but I got injured after two games. Mm -hmm. After two games, I injured my left knee, and I was out until the season finished. And then, like I said, we came back, and then COVID started, and you had the issue with Vietnam not allowing flights to get back in. Because I had a club that wanted to sign me as well again. And since then, it's just been this whole COVID thing has just been, yeah. So I had to venture into other ways of creating income. So, yeah. But the FIFA thing was a really positive, a great positive for me. Yeah. I guess it must be a relief for you that it's finally out of the way and just move forward. Huh? Yeah, because I was out of football for one year prior to that. Yeah, man, no football. I actually went to Malaysia and was supposed to sign and the whole FIFA thing had stopped that deal from going through. So I had to be going through a whole lot of stress. You're talking one year without income, uh, having a wife and two kids to take care of and not being able to do the one thing that normally relieve you of stress as well. So it was really rough. Yeah. Well, it's, it's good to know that that's out of the way and everything. And I just talk about you know, what you've been doing otherwise. We've seen what you've been doing on social media and, and investing in an aspect. Is this something that you learned when you were in school or as a professional, you just slowly started to get more knowledgeable? You know, actually, when I left high school, I didn't have much choice but to go and work. And uh, because of my family being a single parent home, but I was lucky enough to have a father with an accounting firm. And being working with him for seven years, it kind of gave me that financial knowledge and that business knowledge to understand what works in Jamaica and what doesn't work without having to actually get the experience myself. I could learn from clients. I could see which business were having the better financial statements compared to other business. So that kind of changed my perspective on what I would do after football. It, it was just sadly that f the FIFA case kind of took me out of football because I, I had no way our plans to even think about setting up life after football that early. Because I was, I think, 31, 32 at the time. Even though it's not early, but it's early in Asia. As you know, in Asia, players play up to even 40 years. So the mind wasn't there. But I think it was all God's plan because coming home, I had to invest in a home because I didn't have one. And then I had to find another source of income to take care of the family since I didn't have the football. And the real estate ended up being the area that I would venture in. And... Like I said, no, we have an apartment down by Ocherius, by the beach, which we Airbnb, and that has been a miracle. And just to know that even before, I didn't know what I would come back to Jamaica to do, outside of sports, per se, yeah, to, to stumble on that kind of thing that 
he's able to take care of the whole family. You can say it's a blessing. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy that it's something that is thriving for you. I remember I read your first book, but I understand that you now have a second book. Is it around a real estate model? Yeah, man, it's you know, I'm gonna keep it far. So, this is the actual <laughs> book, it's okay. called Finding Financial Independence. Yeah, so it's actually about how we learned about that investment property, how we're able to change it over and turn it into something that is booming now. And for a place like Jamaica, that most of the time you get so much negative feedback from nobody wants to invest here, everybody want to go overseas. So, it, 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 it has surprised a lot of even teammates, even friends I know, people that see me living now, wondering how it's possible. Yeah, this book actually guides you on how I was able to do that. And it's not only about real estate, because I also invest in the stock market as well. And if you know the Jamaica Stock Exchange has been the best performing stock exchange since 2015 to 2018. I think right before COVID. Even during COVID, it was in maybe the top five. So that has been another year that I've spent time to gain knowledge and to learn and and I've invested in and got reward from it. So you can say it's mainly about the stock market in Jamaica and the real estate market in Jamaica, which is really good. Yeah, you know, you've had good experiences professionally, you know, we've spoken about the far east side in, in Thailand and Vietnam and that loan that you had in Russia. But sometimes a player might think might not think beyond football, but this is an avenue that perhaps some other footballers should look towards for the future. So there's life after football. Yeah, man, and this is the, and and this is what I think most players need to pay attention to now because you don't want to when you finish football, that is the time you want to try get everything in place. And simple as my son, a lot of players you talk with, and I'm guiding them down the same road. So at the same time, you can't force people to do what you're doing because people have other ideas as well, but. I I have at least where I, there's a place called Fisherman Point where I have my apartment now, and I have five other owners who bought because of watching my YouTube channel and learning, I reading the book and reaching out. I know their owners, I know they're doing the same thing, and just that alone, we know that even though they're not football players, at least we help another Jamaican fee create another stream of income, which is maybe the main thing now, the mindset now to just have multiple streams of income where you don't physically have to get up every day. And trade the labor for money. Like my, my son, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, preach, but yeah, that's the mentality right now. Yeah, it's a good mentality to have. Have you tried with like other national players or other Jamaican ballers the idea and see what they feel about it? Yeah, well, to be honest with you, you have two young players. You might know them. I don't think the general public might know them, but I don't know if you know Rimario Garden. He's playing in Vietnam now. And yeah. another player by Chevy Walsh. He's yeah. Jam they're Jamaicans, but they play in Vietnam. Yeah, so I am kind of mentoring them rapidly because they're young, and when you play football, it seems as if it's Christmas every month. Because compared to the average nine to five football, make you feel like say, this kind of income will be coming forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but after football, it's a whole another story. And like them say, uh, two to three years after football, more most footballers tend to go broke two to three years after retirement. So it just shows you that it's not about the money. Because footballers earn way above the normal people, but yet they tend to end up on the back end over the longevity of life. So I try to help them to understand that. Yeah. And you see what is happening in Vietnam, Jamaica, are we doing well? Germany is just scoring goals for fun there. I just wanted to know from you if this is a market that Jamaican footballers should exploit because clearly we're in demand of talent in that part of the world. Yes, to be honest with you. Like I said, I've spoken to even Jeremy Lynch, if, if, if he told you that I was the one who pushed him to go to Asia in general, yes. Because even to be more frank, if you look at the salary, you probably understand better, understand the, the player's salary in the USL. It is joke on any level for a professional, especially Jamaicans, because to be honest, they don't respect us. So we tend to get maybe a, maybe a double or triple what we get in Jamaica, and it's already small. So... Even when I met a few players, that they, they were getting less than two thousand US dollars in the USL, and, and and you cannot build a career for that. You cannot set a foundation for that. So in Vietnam is where Vietnam is Asia. Just like you say, Asuka can leave Chelsea to go to China. It's all about the finances. So especially in Jamaica, where we don't have most of us are, are poor guys from from poorer class of Jamaica are from a poorer background. 
And Vietnam is a place where you get good, solid football, and you also get respected as a player in terms of whether you're a Jamaican, whether you're a Brazilian, etc. So, yeah, I would rather see the players them go, because sometimes people question if Vietnam football is good. I can remember that Jamaica last three of the Vietnam in a friendly game. So the football, trust me, I, I've, I've spoken with Richard Edwards before and he played in that game and he says the first time him actually see ball a move at such a high pace. There's been a lot of Vietnam, the football is so fast because it's more technical. It's not any, like England, where you might find the longer balls being played or the more running up and down. Everything in Vietnam is technical. Short passes, moving the ball from one to back, going forward. So yeah, but for us, we stand out because we, have, we always have good height, we have good speed. So it's a plus for us to play there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and people may have perception about what football is like over there, but if people watch it, there's a quality league there. Clubs are playing the Asian Champions League, but clearly it's an environment where you can develop your game, not just earn a decent living. No, and that is the thing. That is the thing, because when I left Jamaica the first time to go to Vietnam, I remember me and Andre Clennon left together, and we were in training with them, and every pass the players gave us, it was literally like licking a wall. <laughs> because we weren't used to that fast passing and, and the pitches are much better than Jamaica. So when you go on pitches like that, you tend to realize that it's not like Jamaica where players will guide the ball to you because they know you're in a bad surface. In Vietnam, even a 10-yard pass seems as if it's a shot somebody's taking. So for somebody leaving Jamaica without much experience, it takes a little while to adjust and you can develop a lot because the infrastructure is there. In, in Vietnam, I could go to training three times a day without question. Because you, you can take care of yourself in terms of eating right and feeding your body good. And you also have the financial support to say, if you want to get up this morning and go training, you can go into the stadium and master your craft. And that's why over the time in Asia, I was able to score so many goals I do so well because I could focus more on football only because everything else was taken care of. So we don't share talent. It's just that here when you're home in Jamaica, you don't have the resources to move from A to B as much as you'd like. Mm -hmm. And for you personally, uh, Earl, do you have an intention to play perhaps another three years of football, another two seasons of football? How does the body feel? Can it manage a few more years? Yeah, man, to be honest, with you, if the Premier League had started here locally, I would have been playing already for sure because that was the first step for me to try and play back here locally, but the league is not being played. And then because I've been out so long, it's, it, it's proven really difficult to get back a contract outside without being playing, because you can say I haven't, I haven't played since 20, nine, 2019, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely want to play up until maybe 38. That's my dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think you, it's special. You, if the opportunity is on the island, it would be special to see your kids actually see you with your own eyes and actually remember seeing their father play. Yeah, 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 because it's my, only, only my oldest son has ever seen me play. And that was only like two games before I got injured. So, yeah, I really want, that's one of the main things I really want to get them to see me playing as well. That would, that's always an added motivation, you know, that having them. Mm -hmm. If, for an example, an opportunity presented itself overseas, would you be open to it? Or is the family settled and want to stay on the island? Yeah, that is one of the big issues, you know, because everything seems to be flowing so smoothly. You know, sometimes I, I question myself if I am challenging myself because I have found this comfort zone outside of football. And as much as it might seem football is a lot of stress, especially when you have a wife and kids and you have to be moving them around and different schools, especially my older son, he was going to school in Vietnam and he was speaking Vietnamese more than Russian, which, you know, my wife is Russian and English. So I was like worried a bit in terms of having him learning so much different languages and then having to come back to Jamaica. So now that he's settled some part of me, honestly, I would rather go to an English-speaking country if it's the fact that I'm going to move and somewhere that is more family-friendly. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. And clearly, you know, being at home and with family and everything, you will have had some time to look at what's happening in the national What are your thoughts about the team we currently have and the quality that is in the squad right now? Do you think it's capable of great things in the qualifying? Yeah, man, definitely when I watch the second leg of the Saudi Arabia game, Trust me, I can see, I can see where we can get to that big dream of getting to the World Cup. But with all that's going on now, from from me being a player myself for past and being in the camp and everything, I know that 
the small things are what affects the team more than anything else. So with all the things that's going on with the salary, yes, I, I, I see the reaction from the GFF in terms of going for the English players. But to be honest, they can't do it by themselves. No, we are a farm. And, but at the same time, we need them because even with the local base and example, all the ones we have in Europe now, we just need that right blend. And the more options we have, is the better because as you know injury pops up at any moment and we don't have a big squad so now that we have a, a good amount of english players if we can mix them right with the local players it definitely i see the talent there to to go far we just need to start out all the paper stuff that are here going on and you were in the squad in the time where you had maria and it was fair to say these players had good impact on the squad yeah, man, def definitely. Even Mario, you see him still playing. Like I said, even Nazareli, these guys, when they come to the national team, they don't short effort. There's no shortage of effort because for me, when, when, when we're on the pitch, they fight 100% just like everybody else. But for me, to be honest, it's just always some small off the field details. I, I, I saw an interview the other day with, with, with Kemar, Taxi Lions, yeah. And everything he said, it just resonates back to even my time playing. Nothing has changed. And I'm really proud of them for standing up the way they are standing up. Because trust me, I know it's not easy. As much as they might be financially stable in their different clubs, when you look at Bailey or Lower, all of them where they are playing, once you're Jamaican, you just want to represent the country. And I know that the players would play for free. Trust me, it's not a, it's not a money issue. Because as a baller and knowing them, they would play for free. But end of the day, it comes down to the principle and the respect and how you are treated. And just the example I'm showing you with the flights. That has been happening forever. That is nothing new. And, I, and I'm somebody who's always current on these things. So when you read like newspapers and you're hearing stories from the other side saying that they don't know about it and they're going to check it out. No, it's complete madness because it has been going on forever since. So even in my time, if I should share just one small story with you, you remember 2012 when we were playing that World Cup qualifiers? So I played a game against Panama, I think, in the stadium. The game that actually got the injury. Why? Because after that game, I played so well in the stadium, and Coach Mantissa came to me and said, Errol, we're going to start the game against USA. That's what, that was the game that would be USA 2 1 in the stadium, where Shelton scored that free kick. Yeah, I got injured the game before. And I came out of camp the Wednesday. Remind me that that was the actual. World Cup qualifier team. Yeah. So I was in the squad and I got an injury and I come out of the camp. You know that the game is playing the Friday, the Wednesday to the Friday. And when I called to ask for a ticket to go to the game, I couldn't get a ticket. All kind of excuse and I am in the squad now because my injury. Normally, when the, the, the game before, I had four tickets because every player would get like three to four tickets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was in the squad, come out of the squad. I can't even get one ticket for watch my own country play that was just a fight a couple of days before. For. You, you know what I had to do to get into that stadium? I had to take the ID that I had. Because normally when I go through the gate, you know, they punch your ID. So the ID was already punched. I, I had to take a plastic and put on the back of the ID. If make the security guard must say punch already. And that's why I go into the stadium and sit down on the bleachers and watch a match where we probably should have started. So... It show you, and I call everybody up at JFF, and you just hear. And as I said, as a local player, there's not even much you can do. And you have players with other stories like this. So when we talk them stuff, it's not for nobody feel no sympathy for me. I feel the people them understand where the players them I feel go through, because like Taxi said, it no feel right. I I, I was in the same situation. You have fly, and all we are one team, and you see some man in a first class, and you sit down at the back. And that is just one instance because it actually plays out in other scenarios where you see the different treatment when it comes to the English BS versus look. And in the professional world, you don't see stuff like that. So the players that we used to the professional world, like camera them with their Belgium, them now fly economy and them other players are fly first class. Every, everything in you know, the club level, pan the professional level, everything is treated equally across the board because simple things affect everybody. So, yeah, it just needs to be started, though, trust me. And like I said, the players are not fighting for money. It's not no money. Because for complete for Jamaica for 3000 
or, or 4,000 or even 5,000. It's due compared to what the players do make mon monthly or in bonuses at them club. So it's definitely not a money issue. But if there's no respect, you know, get the players then forgive 100%. You can imagine if you were playing in Vietnam now and get called up. You probably have to go on four or five flights just to get the things done. Yes, yes. So I'm, the, I'm telling you. And the thing is because, as I said, players understand more, you know, because uh, we can be in Vietnam and we are playing a game in Vietnam and we have a flight and our club wants us to fly there three, four days before because they are afraid of us getting injured. They are afraid of us being jet lagged. And that is in the country. Imagine flying from Southeast Asia to another side of the world. I'm flying from Belgium going to even Saudi Arabia. And you're flying economy for, for hours. How do you expect a player to find the energy for go out there and give 100%? But at the end of the day, at the same place. And like, like I've said, I remember that same time when we were going to uh, play South Korea. You have so many staff traveling for the games. If it's a shortage of money, make them stay home and put the players them on first class. Because most of these guys that are traveling with the team, I don't think they need it. But they are moving better than even the players who are actually playing the games. And to me, that doesn't make sense. So, so, so to see the team flying the other day and they, and they have one physio and all of these things, it's just so night madness because one physio cannot massage 24 players. So you already have fly economy hours, and when you reach the physio can be massage because you're tired after you massage, massage the first two player them. So just it just add up to me. And we might look on it as those things don't count. Them count. They make a big difference. Because when I'm in Asia, if I don't get massage, I feel like I can't play a match. Because you need your legs them for have that recovery feeling. So you feel like you can go out there for a fresh game and play. Yeah. Whoa. And you, and you know, being in a professional environment, that sometimes you have more support staff than even players. Two, three, 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 three equipment manager. They prepare it like it's a professional setup. Yeah, man. But definitely. Definitely. Anytime we are traveling in Vietnam, it almost looks like we have as much coaches as players and staff and everybody. <laughs> so I'm telling you that. So it's just to show you. I know, I don't know if one says the lack of resources because most of the time I, I don't think it's that because at the end of the day we're not seeing the numbers and I don't like the whole sketchy thing. Example here, the players are asked to see certain details and certain games. Yeah, let the players see it and then they will understand. All right, it's not there, but it's a thing like where you keep all the information to yourself and you expect to tell the player themselves so only this will have and then. No, it's modern times now. The players are playing in more professional environments, so they know things that maybe we never know before because of technology and stuff like that. So they know the numbers them, and they feel like so they now get an equal share of what is being given out, and they get called for representing, and they might face all the pressure then. I don't see why they're not supposed to read. Whether it's monetary or outside of that. Yeah. I mean, you heard it from Tuxi, but you, you heard him say Roy and they probably don't want to talk about that just here in camp because they have all the team. So, you know, there has to be some sort of communication soon. Qualifiers can't be too much last one. Yeah, man. And, and, and he's right about that because, honestly, Mr. Sims not the only person where actually, I mean, if he's the only person we literally can talk to. And sometimes, even we share information like this. You really don't want even somebody like Mr. Sims to feel offended by it because that's the amount of respect. We are feel. But at the same time, it can be a thing because you respect one person. You make everything else slide right across the board. And at the same time, I wouldn't expect them to take an hard feeling towards anything when I say it's just the facts. And if we are state of fact and you can look on it and, and, and say, yeah, Errol, so when I came and say something where we need to work on then work on it. I, 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 if you don't agree, then I just saw but. I shouldn't feel like so I'm obligated to keep quiet because, because as I said, I've, I've been voicing this stuff for years. Yeah. Let's hope that, you know, this is a similar that can be rectified soon. But, but Errol, you know, before I wrap up and everything, the thing, you know, settle down soon. We hope to play another two years, preferably on the island in the next couple of seasons, if football is over. Yeah, that's what I prefer to think because, like I said, I'm 35 next month. Uh, I don't think I need to be chasing around the world at this age. <laughs> so if I can play another two, three seasons, honestly, it's just the love of the sport. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like the way I was stopped playing the other day because of the whole FIFA thing. So I, I really don't want to end what I love and that kind of feeling. Yeah. So if I can play 
two to three seasons here locally and then call it a day then, yeah. And you have a lot of streams available to you. You talk about the investing, playing a few seasons. Bitcoin is, is getting popular now and a YouTube channel, so you have a lot of streams of income now. Yeah, man, well, that, <laughs> yeah, man, God is good, bro, believe me. As I say, there's a lot of things in the works. Yeah, so two books and the whole real estate and stock. And like I said, the YouTube thing is in bad itself. So we just have to give God thanks. And it's just positive information. And yeah, 